part of the reason why cities have, have come back and are attractive is that cities can be really fun places to live. And one of the things we see in the data is that there's been an increasing movement of people to places that have attractive consumer amenities, places that have high quality of life. That means that in many cases the best economic development policy is to focus on good quality of life attributes, which will then attract smart people and then by and large get out of their way. I mean, smart entrepreneurs are very good at creating their own opportunities, but they need to decide that they want to live in a city and that means getting the safety problems down, that means creating enough affordable housing, that means making sure that the schools are good and the other public amenities are good. The great paradox of the future of cities, the great paradox of our age, is that it appears that despite the death of distance, despite the decline in transportation and communication costs, that proximity, urban proximity, has become more valuable than ever. You might have thought that the decline in transportation costs, the rise of email, the ability to effortlessly connect across oceans and continents would make urban proximity unnecessary. Many pundits did say just that. They thought they envisioned a future in which we would be spread out, all telecommuting in from far-flung distances. But that's not the way that it worked. People have come increasingly close to one another, and you see this in, in the Netherlands, you see this in the US with the resurgence of older cities which were taken for dead in the 1970s. You see this most of all in the developing world where dense megacities are turning poor, poor, formerly poor countries like India and China into moderately rich countries. I believe the resolution of this puzzle, the reason why despite the decline in transportation costs, proximity has become more valuable than ever, is that what globalization and new technologies have done is that they've increased the returns to being smart. And what cities do is they connect people and enable them to learn from one another. We're a social species. It's, what, it's our greatest gift as human beings is our ability to learn from the people around us. And successful cities bring smart people together who can learn from one another, who can gather information from one another. This has always been a feature of urban areas, as we just discussed. It's one of the things that made you know, 12th century Bruges magical. It's one of the things that made 17th century Amsterdam magical, was that smart people could come and learn to get smarter. But those benefits were secondary relative to the ability to get the stuff on the boat quicker. But today it's the main show. Today the magic of, of cities is mostly about smart people coming, learning from one another and thereby being able to take advantage of the, the opportunities for skilled people which are so rich in our globalized and technology intensive world. And I think it's helpful here to think about the challenges that face cities as, as being somewhat different in the developing and the developed world. In some cases, they, they share the same problems, the same difficulties, which is, say, for example, the enormous cost of, of housing, uh, which is true both in Amsterdam and in Mumbai. And then there are other problems which the developed world has by and large solved, like the water problem, um, which are still great curses uh, for, the, uh, for the developing world. Now, the starting point in some sense for the, the great urban curses, let's say crime and disease, is that they're the downsides of density. The same proximity that enables me to trade with you or to learn from you also enables me to infect you or to rob you. So it's very natural when you bring a lot of people together on a small amount of space that bad things can happen, be they plagues or riots or crime waves. Um, in fact, the remarkable thing today is that in many places, dense cities are actually less deadly uh, than rural areas. In the US, for example, New York is much safer than the country as a, as a whole. Among younger people, this is actually just the absence of automobiles and actually just a, a reduction in you know, the number one, number one and number two killers for young people in the US are accidents and suicides. And New York City has significantly fewer accidents. It also has significantly fewer suicides, which is a, a deeper puzzle about why it is that people are killing themselves less in big cities. Um, so these are still challenges that greatly you know, trouble our, our, the mega cities of the developing world. And many of these places don't have the government resources, both cash and, and administrative, to actually provide clean water, provide clean sewers. But this is the, this is the challenge uh, ahead. Then I, I think the biggest challenge facing the developed world is how to make cities affordable. And the, if we actually think about a world in which we're not envisioning everyone spread out at car-like densities at, at, you know, using vast amounts of land, there's only one solution for that, and that's building up. And there's only one way to sort of create affordable housing or just to unleash the forces of supply. And in, you, know, you can see in a place like Chicago that that can really work and can provide relatively affordable housing for large numbers of, of people. But you need to actually allow the developers to build. 
The great challenge in Europe, of course, is that the cities are world cultural treasures. And the question is how to balance off the need to build and provide affordable housing for ordinary people and to allow ordinary people to access the advantages of urban proximity against the obligation to protect the great, you know, the great treasures. Um, and, and I would say that while there are, you know, the, 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 there are core areas of Amsterdam which need to be you know, protected no, no matter what, there are more areas that can be built up than, than currently are and that can enable walking cities where people can you know, enjoy access to the older, more beautiful areas, but you need, to, you need to build tall towers, otherwise it doesn't work.